tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, as the needs are raging all around us. If anybody doesn't think we live in the end times, they don't have a TV or radio or Facebook. Hurricanes, earthquakes. Guys, I, I just, we need to wake up and we need to be prepared. Um, let's remember Roberto's family. I know yes. that uh, the hurricane is passing right over uh, Puerto Rico all day. Uh, the flooding is really bad. I, I think Roberto said the whole island is without power. Mm -hmm. So let's remember Roberto's family and all those. Um, I don't know the extent of the damage in some of the places in the Virgin Islands that were already destroyed by the other hurricane, Harvey, Irma. I don't remember if we have so many. I think it was Irma that went over the Virgin Islands and then Maria. Um, remember those in Mexico City with the I didn't realize it was the exact same day 32 years ago. There are no coincidences. And sometimes right. I just think if we don't get it, we get to come back around again sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, there's just serious needs right now, and I know in our body there are as well. So, anyone have any prayer requests or any testimonies that you have to use? I had a friend, Kim, I talked to you on the internet. She said her aunt and uncle once by the battle of leukemia and myelinia, some different. Diseases and I hope that they and her friends, yeah, that God takes off of them in that shape that it will be, you know, to what God says. So let's help people up. That's a pretty serious mm -hmm. disease. And Jesus is the healer of all diseases, and I help that. Mm -hmm. The situation I have in jazz band, I can tell my teacher not to overdo me and not to stress me out too much and how. I have enough discernment how to express what I feel. Give me strength and wisdom and knowledge and discernment there. Okay. So. All right. Okay. Yes, I don't really have a prayer request as much as I just want to, I'm just really thankful for where I am in my life and where Eric and I are in our lives together and where, you know, our, our businesses, I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't have expected this in less than six years. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And I'm just really, I'm just very thankful. Just, I'm very thankful and I'm extremely humbled by all of it. Glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I got a text from Tim Hatt. He asked for a uh, prayer for me and Leah and their entire family and all the stuff that's been going on. Uh, and also because he can't be here tonight or Sunday because of work, so mm -hmm. just continue to pray for them, mm -hmm. their entire family. Absolutely. Um, and I do have a praise report. I forgot to share about that little girl Mariah in Alaska who's been battling cancer. She's officially in remission. Um, and had, I think she was originally diagnosed with stage four, stage four of her kids lymphoma, and is officially in remission. Um, and she's done with her chemotherapy treatments. She's completely done. Um, they videotaped her running out of the hospital and literally ran the whole way out of the hospital. She's got a long journey to be back to her normal self, but she is healed in the name of Jesus. So that's a huge Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, what else tonight? Yeah. Uh, just pray for our youth. Um, I know they're scattered right now. And, uh, um, Kennedy was. Uh, Kind of, she wasn't voicing it, but voicing the uh, that there are those that should be here uh, that are calling into the mist. But when I saw the mist of it, and I was talking to Reed about it later, um, I believe she's got a spirit of intercession on her, calling of intercession for her, because the way she was expressing herself uh, downstairs um, during youth time was revealing God's heart. Uh, he's missing most of his bride. Just like you're looking around here tonight and on Sunday and a lot of other places and stuff. The Lord is wanting to be with his bride. And most of them are scattered right now. And this 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 same look in her eyes when we're talking was what revealed was revealing the Lord to her. I and mean, she doesn't understand it yet. Yeah. And uh Pray and, and uh, ask Rita to pray of how we uh, help her understand uh, how how's it 
expressed in the church, the groanings of the spirit. Yeah. This is what she is already ex experiencing. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, another thing was uh, praying for uh, us to be able to do baptisms, uh, water baptisms. We haven't had any here since the flood. And uh, <laughs> and uh, also uh, praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for the youth and other people that are in our midst. Mm -hmm. okay. So, re revival's coming, uh, it, uh, and it's here. It just needs to be released by those who are here. And, the Lord says, I always work with a remnant. I will work with a remnant, and I will continue to work with a remnant. And who is here, even this night, can spark revival. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.
We come with expectation. We come with thankful hearts. We come to praise your name because you are worthy. You are worthy of our praise. Accept our sacrifice of praise tonight as an offering of love to you. And bless the word as it comes forth, Lord. Let the seeds be planted deep in our hearts, Lord. And let the fruit come forth. Let the harvest season, tomorrow is the first day of fall. Let the harvest season be upon us. Yes, Lord. Yes. That these storms will not delay the harvest, but they will bring forth a multiplication in the harvest. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Reminder if you have your cell phones to turn them off or silence up. And next Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday, Tom Singer will be here. Um, anybody in the worship team that can join us, anybody is welcome to join the service. Uh, we're the host house, the, the host church, um, but we are not the host group. So um, we're happy to help um, Tom and so come and be blessed. And again, a reminder that. September, uh, November. I keep saying September. I want it to be now, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> November. I have to wait another month and a half. Uh, November 11th, uh, Sarah and I, we're going to all our fun crafts in the back. Um, we'll have t-shirts for our guests. So just invite people. Tell everybody about it. We had such a good time last time. And we have such high hopes for this next one, too. Um, so invite uh, ladies. Put some posters up around the neighborhoods. And uh, can't wait to see what the Lord's going to do. Amen. Amen. All right, um, Ron, you want to come take an offering tonight? Let us not stop in the middle of the river, Lord, on this 
stepping stones. Let us cross over to the completion of what you're trying to tell your bride. Help us, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Let your spirit, Lord, let your spirit, Lord, even as the word is being released in this place, Lord, let the message from your throne room go forth, Lord. Let it be the sword like it is, Lord. Let no one take offense, Lord, to the truth any longer. Let the naysayers have questions about their naysayers. Can this be of the Lord? Let them no longer question, Lord, this thing that you are doing through your grace and your mercy. Let them understand, Lord, the page is going to turn and it's not going to turn back. There's a new chapter, a new revelation. We cannot go back to the family. We cannot go back to the old lines here. We cannot go back to the old line. We must reach forward. If it takes shredding of the old lines, we can still make new ones. Let it be. If it takes pouring out the old line, we can make new ones. 
loving staying in your presence and seeing your presence and releasing your presence on oh, the
God, we love you because you first loved us. We are so thankful for that love. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for a love that just passes all understanding. Incomprehensible. The love of God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you that not only do you love us, but that you are love. And that knowing you is knowing love. Experiencing love. Living. In Jesus, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, again, for all that you're doing in each of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the lives that have been saved and protected and provided for throughout all of these uh, natural catastrophes. We know, Lord, that you are our supernatural protection in the time of trouble, a very present help. And we declare that, Lord, in the face of the lies of the enemy. You are our source, our salvation our Savior. In Jesus' name, everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Mike and worship team. Great job as always. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. With little or no notice. In fact, no notice. Praise the Lord. She just does it. And then all sorts of little things over here. I just, want, I just want a quilt. <laughs> those, are, those are the props. Yeah. Get it myself. Raise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> design something that's completely foolproof is that we generally underestimate the ingenuity of complete fools. <laughs> so Lord, all you have to do is look around the government to see it in action. <laughs> Amen. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Always yeah. good to be with the people of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And before I get into the message tonight, I want you to don't forget that the moon will be visible from Earth tonight. The last time this happened was last night. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sick of hearing all this oh my gosh. celestial stuff. Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> Hell you ready? Right. It'll be out there tonight. <laughs> Hell Bob. It'll look a lot like last night. Praise the God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to be brief. I've got my uh, two one-liners in. I've done my getting younger impression, so we can move right on. To the word of God. Praise, Praise the Lord. Thank you. They're feeling that back. Real great. Woo! 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 So thank you. It was like partial. Okay, let's begin with Galatians chapter 4 and verse 7. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 7. Sure. I got like three different little scriptures here, Mike. Uh, that I want to use to set things up a little bit here. But beginning with uh, Galatians 3, or excuse me, 4, verse 7. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Okay, Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 14 through 16. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Praise the Lord. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. These are scriptures that we really need to understand and be uh, receptive to, especially in the last days. Amen? Amen? Men's hearts failing them for fear. Uh, people freaking out everywhere because of the stuff that's happening. If they don't have a relationship with God, I'd be frightened too. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. It's not real surprising, I guess, that when Jesus came on the scene, they didn't recognize Him, they didn't acknowledge Him, that they do basically the same thing with us. They just kind of laugh us off as a bunch of idiots. Praise the Lord. Idiots that they'll be looking for when everything breaks loose. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. But we are no longer servants, but sons. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of Jesus in our heart cries out, Abba, Daddy. You know what? When everything's going bad, there's just, we may not be saying it with our mouth, and certainly you can, but our hearts, our spirit, are crying out to God as a daddy, as our protector, as our father, our provider. Amen? We haven't received the spirit of bondage that operates through fear. The way we get drawn... Think about all of the church services you may or may not have been in where they just scared the hell, try to scare the hell out of you. Just frighten you with all the stuff that can happen. You know, that if you don't get everything perfect, then what's going to happen as a result of that? But God didn't give us that spirit of feeling like we're, we're, we're in bondage to fear. Amen? We aren't under the slave masters like Egypt was. Amen? We aren't just serving God. We are heirs of God. Praise the Lord. We're not just doing stuff, amen, because we belong to Him or because we owe Him a debt. We're doing things. We are ser we're, we're serving God in terms of, uh, of our inheritance, of who we are in Christ. Faithful to our identity as children of God. Amen? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. 2 Peter 1, verse 4. We have all these precious promises from God, these, these guarantees of the Lord, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. The world is corrupt. And I don't mean that just in a uh, legality uh, or legal sense. I mean it, it's corrupted. I, re I remember when we lived in Texas, they used a lot of words... They're genuine words, and they're words that are, that are appropriate, but they just are not words that we really use up here. When they talk about having an infection or something, they'll, be, they'll, they'll say corruption. You know, my, my uh, shoulder, I had this bad cut, and it was full of corruption. I remember my pastor's wife, and I'm thinking, my God, woman, you need deliverance. But she was talking about just something that's just destroying the body or destroying that particular thing. So corruption that's in the world... Through lust. Amen? We have these divine promises. The divine nature of God. Just think about it. We have His DNA. Yeah. His divine nature attributes. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's who we are. We now have a life. Yeah. Not a law. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Jesus delivered us from having to serve because of fear of retribution. He makes it so that we serve just out of love. Yes. Whatever we do, we just do it because we love the Lord, not because we're obligated, not because there'll be some sort of, uh, some sort of retribution if we don't, but just because we can and we want to. Yes. Israel was delivered from physical bondage, but we've been delivered from spiritual bondage, which is called religion. Yep. And it's taskmaster which is fear. Praise the Lord. We have come to a perpetual rest because we dwell in the one who completely finished the work. Praise the Lord. There's nothing more to be done. There isn't something else that has to be done. There just has to be somebody who's willing to acknowledge that it is done. And then rest in that finished work. That's, that's the call that we have. Amen? Our Sabbath isn't a day of the week. It's Jesus Christ. Yes. I heard somebody saying today, you know, what? every time Jesus... I've looked at this in different ways. And on the one hand, I say, I think a lot of times He was just spitting in the face of religion all the time. Uh-huh. 
But at the same time, what he was doing was drawing his attention away from the ritual to himself. Amen. Yes. When he, on the, the day of the great feast, it says, uh, they, they would pour out what? They would take water from these mitzvahs, these living springs, these springs of water. They would bring it up and they would pour it out. And the priest would uh, declare and, and quote from the Torah about God sending rain. To revive the land and to heal them and to uh, to give them life, and that was the moment as this ritual was going on that Jesus said, "Hey, come unto me, all you that are thirsty." <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he just interrupted their little thing for the reality. Come on, I'll give you water that will cause you to never thirst again. Out of is. your belly will flow rivers of, of this water. living water. Here we go. What they call the, the water that was coming from the rain, rather right. than just pools of water that come from the rain. Mm -hmm. And he just pointed them directly to what all this stuff was about. It's me. We'll start the rain. Yeah. Amen. And that's if you think about it, that's what I said at the very beginning. When we what what we're doing here, they didn't recognize him. He kept saying, "Look, this is the answer. This is the answer." You're, you're, you're focused on these rituals and on this uh, on the metaphors and I'm the reality. Yep. Right? And that's what we are. That's what we're supposed to understand that that's who we are. We're not, we're not supposed to be pointing people to a ritual or a, a religious function. We're supposed to point them to Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? So that they, they can receive everything that God has for them and not just get wrapped up in a religion of fear and stress and anxiety. Galatians chapter 4, verses 3 through 7 this time. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of, time, of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, so that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Yes. Praise the Lord. We we're in bondage to the law. Whether we were involved in a church service or not, we were in bondage to the law because that's the only thing we had to relate to. Everybody outside of Christ is in bondage to the law. Whether they ever go to church or don't go to church, whether they believe in God or don't believe in God, they're still going to be judged by that law. That's right. They're under bondage to it. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. And uh, so, we didn't just need redemption from sin, which is what uh, kind of religion feeds us. You need to be delivered from sin. Well, of course we need to be delivered from sin, but we didn't need redemption just from sin. We needed redemption from the law. Hmm. That's what he said. We needed to be redeemed from the law, from religion, not not just from uh, Amen, from the bad stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. All right, Hebrews chapter two, verse fifteen. You know, we've had people come and go in this church, and and for the most part, the people that have left have left because of one thing, religion. Yep. They weren't getting enough of it here. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not saying that to be sarcastic or to be a smart aleck. I just know because I talked to them. Yep. The ones that gave me the courtesy to speak to me before they left. That was not all of them, but some. And uh, so, I, I mean, I just get it. They're not, they can't, here's the deal. Everybody wants grace for themselves. But we like religion for others because it's a way of manipulating them. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, that's just, that's human nature. It's a twofold ministry. Uh, Praise the Lord. You know? <laughs> all right. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Yeah. Now, in bondage to the law. Yeah. Yep. That bodies to the law operated through the fear of death. Yeah. Romans 8.14 Those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Right? We're not led 
by the fear of dying and going to hell. We're not being led by the fear of punishment and judgment and condemnation. We're led by the Spirit. By the love of God. That same Spirit that, that in our heart cries, Abba, Father. Yes. No fear there. This isn't an abusive Father. This is not some, you know, nutcase. This is a God who loves us and gave Himself for us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Look at uh, Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto man, uh -huh. but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, he didn't say there's a way that seems wrong to man, but he could have, because it's all about the knowledge of good and evil. Right. Mm -hmm. It's eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yep. We ate our way into this mess. Yeah. Yep. Yes, we did. Praise the Lord. And now we've got to eat our way out of the problem. We're in the life. We have to change our spiritual diet. People that want to just keep going and beating themselves up and everybody else up, they're eating some crap that will kill them. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's poison. <laughs> I'm serious. Poison. It's just like with Adam. It'll kill their it'll spirit kill first, them, but eventually they're going to die too. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Fix the root. I... Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> So, like, let's change our spiritual habits. Yes. Right. Let's have some spiritual provision. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> I say it real fast because I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> Two old tricks. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> I'm never sure if I'm actually saying it or if I'm saying something really foul in Japanese. But... It's Korean. Either one would be good. You know. Either one. Ah, hey, no. That's oh, good. Right. <laughs> we need to feed on the finished work of Christ. There you go. That's what we need to make our steady diet. Yes. What He has done. Mm -hmm. What He has accomplished. Now I said earlier that Jesus didn't just redeem us from sin. He also redeemed us from the curse of the law. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it isn't just about the stuff we've done. It's, it's about all the stuff we have left undone. We've been redeemed from all of them. Yep. Yes. Praise God. Man, I'm telling you, if people just understood, if the good news was just presented as the good news, yes. I, I can't see why people wouldn't want to be part of it. There's no, yep. there's no gun to your head here. Come on now. I mean, there's no threat to you. It's all about being set free. Romans 12, verse 2. And this is something I'm telling you, the, the, the closer and closer we get to the end times and all that plays out through that reality, the more we need to understand this. Yes. The more we have to understand and comprehend the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. Now when Paul was writing this, and he talked about being conformed to this world, he was not talking about this. He was talking about an age. Mm -hmm. Not a geographic location as much as an age or a, a, a way that uh, life was at the time. The age that he was talking about was the age of the law. Right. Don't be conformed to this age that is being judged by the law. Right. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove what is the acceptable, perfect will of God. Mm. Amen? The word world here is the Greek word aeon. A-I-O-N. Aeon is actually the way it's pronounced, but it's called age. That's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. huh. He's not talking, I mean, when I was, I'll tell you, Anybody that went through the holiness standards and so forth, it's all about looking like everybody else. Uh, it's all external. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, you could dress yourself up and look like a perfect Pentecostal and be just as... So I knew something, praise the Lord. <laughs> and so, I'm not saying anybody's that way. I'm just saying that is a fact. That, that's what happens because it's all on the outside. Amen? Amen. 
So that age, with its cosmetic message of conformity, was coming to an end when Jesus came on the scene. A new messianic age of transformation was coming and has come. Mm -hmm. Where we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Now we're already transformed. But in order for this to match up with this, we need our minds renewed. Yes. To what? To the love of God. To the goodness of God. To the fact that we are no longer under bondage to the law. The concept of conformity is to take an external set of, uh, of rules and regulations and impose them on people to make them change. Anybody who spent any time in the military knows, amen, what conformity is. They don't, listen, one of the first things they teach you in boot camp, and I'm sure it's true of any service, but for me I know it was, they weren't looking for uh, independent thinkers. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They, uh, they didn't want individuals. They want conformity. Praise the Lord. That's what religion wants. Conformity. Praise the Lord. The Greek word for transformation is the word that we use for metamorphosis. And uh, it's metamorphosis what it is, but it's uh, everything that we need to become the sons of God is written into our spiritual DNA. It's like metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. Or metamorphosis. Everything's in that chrysalis, that larvae, to produce the butterfly. Yep. Everything that we have need of to accomplish anything and everything that God wants us to do is already in us. Yes. It's in our spiritual DNA. And it comes at the moment that we're born again. Mm -hmm. That's what the cocoon of grace does for us. Mm -hmm. It does. We don't. Yes, Lord. We're like the thing hanging on the branch of the tree. Kind of ugly. The vine. Not mm -hmm. worth a whole lot. Doesn't do much. But as the DNA of God, as the grace of God operates in us, eventually mm -hmm. we blossom into this beautiful thing that can have. Oh, well, you know what do butterflies do? They're, they, they're like bees. They're, they, they go around and pollinate everything. They bring life. They, they bring beauty. They bring a, a picture of God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let me wax a little poetic here. I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to stay with the theme here. It wraps us. This, this grace wraps us in God's unconditional love. It's not behavior modification. It's not self-help. It's a new creature. Mm. That's what grace does. That's who we are. That's what we are. And, and, and of nothing that we have done of ourselves, but simply by making ourselves available to God and to let God do what only God can do. What religion does is change behavior. What grace does is change hearts. Yes. Mm. Behavior doesn't get you anything with God. Right. It's faith. It's just believing and trusting. Galatians chapter 3, verse 12. Galatians 3, verse 12. People, we need this, but the world needs it. And if we don't have it, there's no way it's going to get it. Religion. But we, 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 we need to love believers in Christ. Yep. But we don't have to emulate them. Right. I remember, uh, I think it was Gandhi, I read years ago, had said, I would be a Christian if I hadn't met one. Mm -hmm. Woo! Now that's a horrible thing, but that's a fact. Most of us have had an experience like that. Yep. So, the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Praise God. Yep. Verse 23. So the law is not of faith, but the man that doesn't has to live in it. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Uh -huh. What we are doing is telling people who they are in Christ. 
instead of what's wrong with them. Unless they're really mentally challenged or psychotic or neurotic, they already know what's wrong with them. They don't need somebody to tell them they're flawed. What they need is somebody to tell them that in Christ they can be perfect without anything in and of themselves other than just believing. Mm -hmm. The emphasis should be on developing the new creature yes. instead of beating up the old one. That's right. We've spent all I, I, I used to love that expression, you're beating a dead horse. Mm -hmm. But that's what religion's been doing for 2,000 years. That's right. Beating a dead body. Beating mm -hmm. somebody that doesn't even exist anymore. That's right. Right. I mean, rule number one when you find yourself in a hole is stop digging. Right. And what what is the church now? It's just gotten bigger shovels. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pass them around to everybody. Participate, uh, you know. Praise the Lord. The emphasis has to be on developing the new creature instead of beating up the old. Now, last scripture. Let's look at this. Uh, Philemon 6. This is one of my favorite scriptures. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. That's not one you hear a whole lot. No. Mm -hmm. But think about it. So that the communication, the way I can communicate my faith, the best way for me to communicate my faith is by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in me in Christ Jesus. This is God telling us. You want to share your faith? You want to share Christ? You want to share the truth of God? Then do it by acknowledging that you are filled with the DNA of God. Yes. With the goodness yes. of God. With the love of God. With the reality of God. Yes. Instead of trying to point to their fault or their flaw, point to the grace of God that's operating in you. Mm -hmm. And let them participate in it. Let them be a part of it. Amen. Let them feel good about themselves. Yes. Amen. That's what God does. He brings us to a place where we can feel good about ourselves. Glory. Without psychoanalysis and uh -huh. all the other stuff. Just, right. you're, it's all good with me, you know? Uh -huh. That's what he's telling us. That's the way we should live our lives. We shouldn't be neurotic, you know, freaked out, nail-biting weirdos. <laughs> we ought to be the calmest, most relaxed, Chill happiest, out. comical, even. Jesus, listen, you got you got to laugh at this. When they're, they're out there doing all this work, trying to be religious, and I'm sure they were, you know, Doing their the whole thing, you know, with flow and motion and everything. They pour the water out and they're quoting scriptures. And Jesus said, "Hey, you want water? You want living water? Come over here and drink, and you'll never thirst again." Right. He was basically just saying, "That's a sham. It's, it's all it's all for show." You're right. Here's the reality. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. I'm not trying to ridicule people who don't agree with me. Or I mean, God knows there's plenty of them. I'm just saying, make it informed decision. Don't just make one based on somebody else's grandfather's 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 attitude about how it's supposed to be. Right. You, you were given a mind, the mind of Christ. We need to use it. We need to wake up, pity those uh, who cannot see it or refuse to see it, and just be so grateful. Think about something. Here's something that will keep me awake from time to time. Why, Lord? Me. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that arrogantly, and I don't mean it with any kind of pride. I'm just saying, why did I get this when so many don't? Mm -hmm. What? What? Lord, you are so great. It's, I don't mean to say it in a way that it sounds like I, I'm special. I am special to God, or you wouldn't have said what he said. But think how special you really are. There you go. Now, I'm not talking about heaven and hell here, but I'm talking about the fullness of a relationship yes. with God that, that the vast majority of Christianity doesn't ever experience. 
Right. Hmm. They'll have to die for it. When Jesus said, you don't have to die, I've already died for it. Mm -hmm. I want you to be the beneficiary. I want you to be the inheritor of this reality. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's what's so pathetic about Islam. You gotta die. You gotta die a violent death. And hopefully, in their mind, take a bunch of people with you if you're gonna have any guarantee of heaven. That's not a heaven I want to go to. No, nope. <laughs> that's not the place I'm looking to spend eternity. But here, my God, He gave His life for me. Amen. So that I don't have to. Yes. So that I can experience the fullness of this life and all that is to come. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. amen. Amen. By the acknowledging of every good thing that's in us by Jesus Christ. Yes. Give the Lord a hand tonight. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's, look, the grace doesn't cost us anything to share with others. So let's just do it. And as we draw closer and closer to the end, there's nothing for us to fear. It ought to be for us. I think of it like this. It's like Christmas when I was a little kid. There's a lot of anxiety. You know, there's a lot of heightened uh, kind of tension. But not fear. It's right. excitement. Mm -hmm. It's excitement. And that's how we should experience it. That's how we should live it out. Amen. Amen. We're not, we're not running looking for caves to hide. Nope. Praise the Lord. I'm just looking up. Because my redemption draws nigh. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here tonight. Have a good rest of the week. See you back here Sunday. Amen. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. You're dismissed in His name. Amen. Don't forget to check out that moon tonight. <laughs>